Good afternoon, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talk. So today I'm going to be processing up some steaks, getting them uh, in food saver bags, getting them, getting them ready, pretty much frozen for the winter. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, there's no point. Um, just buy them when they come out. There's a lot of different theories on that. However, the reason I bought them like this is one, I like to buy them when I can get a deal on them. Two, the biggest reason right now that I'm doing it right now is because I believe come this winter with rising oil prices, with rising gas prices, uh, we're going to see a lot more rising food prices. And because of the shortages on grain right now, the shortages in hay because of the drought, a lot of uh, cows have been taken to the meat market, they've been butchered, and if you don't get it now, it's probably going to be astronomically more expensive later. So right here, I've got 20 ribeyes um, that I'm going to be processing up. Shouldn't take us too long. Uh, we're going to get them all sealed up, and I'm going to walk you through what I like to do, why I do this, and I highly recommend you guys do this too. Just buying extra food now is another way that I preserve my money. Um, because if prices do go up, let's say a ribeye jumps up by, let's just say three bucks or two, three bucks over the winter. Well, if I want a ribeye, um, two or three bucks more, compound that by there's 20 here. You got to really look at small amounts, um, saving money, uh, wealth preservation. It's a lifestyle. It's not something that's done overnight. Uh, just like stacking. A lot of you guys follow my stacking videos. I do a lot of prepping videos too. However, I've been hardcore on the stacking videos lately because, I mean, let's face it, it was a steal picking up coins, uh, gold, silver for a while, but I think we're about ready to see the gold and silver category jump. And when it comes to food, now we're about ready to see the food prices jump even more. So I'm trying to get in position um, and get ready. Now, if you haven't done anything like this yet, I recommend, in my personal opinion, maybe you consider doing it. Go through your freezers, look through what you got, use some of what you got. A lot of people just stack stuff up in their freezers and they never really rotate out their freezer. I, the last month, have been using what I've got in my freezer, getting it ready. Uh, I knew this day was coming where I was going to start stacking up some meat, uh, maybe some deer meat even. Hopefully a deer is going to come my way come this winter. And we'll see what happens winter, fall, depending on your hunting season, where you're at. Um, so with that being said, let's start processing these steaks and I'll walk you guys through what I do. Okay, so I like to package two steaks at a time uh, because most of the time I am always going to do two. I usually have myself and a guest, um, which requires two steaks. And so I package them in two. Sometimes it's myself, my son. It's it's always just, it seems like whenever I'm barbecuing, it's two. And if not, I'll have one for lunch tomorrow. Um, I like to season my steaks uh, before I preserve them. And the reason I do that is that way that seasoning has time to sit in there. It's going to get freezed in. If there happens to be some shortage in something, I already have my steak seasoned pretty much ready to go. Uh, in the past, I did put little blocks of butter on them. I don't do that all the time. It really depends on if I have it. I didn't remember it today, so I didn't do it today, but that's all right. So I like to season the steaks just like so. Get it to make sure it sticks. I'll flip them and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, having that seasoning with them gives it a, a great long time because these are probably going to sit in my fridge for six months maybe. Um, and then it gives that seasoning time to really work its way in. Then the next thing I'm going to do, I get them as close together and try to get a rough measurement on what size food saver bag I'm going to need. So I'll just run it over like that. I've already got one side sealed. Keep in mind to um, don't try to be too cheap with these. It's something that I had a problem with early on where I would uh, try to save my material. I guess you could say, and so I wanted it to be the exact size. The problem doing that is basically if you don't give yourself enough room, you are going to severely get burned when you try to put these in here. But you can work with the stakes a little bit. So like you see here, I probably won't have you go through all of these with me, but we'll do some so you guys know. The shape, you know, they'll be malleable, 
because they're not frozen. Once they're frozen, they're going to remain in that shape, whatever shape you put them in. However, keep in mind when you take them out and they thaw out, they're going to be malleable again. So you'll be able to work with them. This is a food saver. I've talked about this numerous times on the channel. I love this for a lot of different types of food that I'm going to put in the freezer. Don't confuse freeze saver bags with Mylar bags because we talk a lot about Mylar bags. In fact, I'm fixing to uh, promote a company that I will be getting a commission off of uh, a small percentage um, pretty soon. So we will be promoting a specific brand. Um, I, I like their brand. I've been using it now. And so now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to recommend it. But I talked to the company in order to recommend it. I've got to get a deal for you guys. Um, so we've already talked and there's going to be a promo code where you guys can save money on that type of stuff. But don't confuse food saver bags with Mylar bags. So with that being said, with these, all you do, you plug it in, open it up, and you're going to place it right there, just like that, so it's on the inner lip. And you're going to shut it, and then you're going to lock it in place. So now it's locked, and you're able to hit some buttons. You can see the green light on up here. And all you're going to do, if you're just going to seal it, then you could just hit seal. But I want to suck the air out of it and seal it, and that way that seasoning will have time to set in there, and it's going to prevent the steaks from getting freezer burn. Now make sure you give it time. A lot of people want to hurry up and open it up. If that light doesn't go out, this hasn't had time to seal. So make sure you recognize what those lights mean on there. Um, one light means it's ready. Two lights means that it's working. When the red light comes on, it's actually sealing the bag shut. And then when it goes back to one, that means it's ready to open again and ba-boom. So there they are. There is two ready to go. You can take a look at that. Those look delicious. Those are nice ribeyes. Um, and I'm going to do up a bunch of them. So let's keep it going. Now, I want to mention one thing I do see people do is they will pre-cut a lot of bags. So in my case, I'm going to be using 10 of these bags. You can pre-cut them, but be mindful. Um, if you cut it too short, you will end up having to waste the bag, or you can put it up and save it for later. But a lot of times, they'll get lost. Um, and you're going to want to seal one side and then fill the bag. That way, you actually get a bag, because this is like one long tube of essentially bag material um, cut to the sizes you want that's one of the features i like about food saver it doesn't matter if i want to preserve a whole rack of ribs or a whole pork tenderloin or if i just want to preserve a couple of steaks um, some people will preserve stuff using a food saver um, for everyday items i don't go that far because i don't want to spend the money on the bag material over and over again however it's not super expensive if you're smart about how you buy them so i buy my food saver bags in big rolls so that way i save the most money on it um, I love these steaks too because they have a beautiful fat line on them. So if you're like me, I, I got to be honest, I, I love that fat. When you barbecue fat, it gives it an incredible flavor. Um, it just can't beat doing it. If you're going to do it on a pan, maybe a George Foreman or, or something like that, I'm not as big of a fan in that method as I am putting it on a pit and just barbecuing it. Um, you can't beat flame. So here we go, open that up. Now what I did here, and I want you guys to know this, if it seems like it's taking a lot longer to seal, then you don't have it lined up right. Yes, you started getting a seal, open it up and put it back in and make sure you want a good seal. Because what you don't want to do is spend all this money and then go and break it out and you've got essentially um, freezer burn on your steaks. So. And you'll know, you'll see it start sucking. You'll see it start tightening up the bag. That's what you want to see. 
If it's already been going for 10, 20 seconds, you don't hear it getting louder, then you know it's not doing what it's supposed to. You can hear the noise raising from it. And I'm hoping I didn't have trouble with this one by cutting it a little bit too short um, to where I'm not going to get a good seal. You'll know. If that red light doesn't come on, you're not getting the seal that you want. So you might have to work sometimes with the bags. You don't want to get a half... I don't want to say the bad word. You don't want to get a bad seal, though. I can tell you that. So we're going to lift it up a little bit because I need every inch up there, every little quarter inch, whatever, up there. So that bag I did have a little bit of a trouble with. I couldn't get it to seal fully. So I finally adjusted it. I paused the camera and adjusted it and then got it. So there you go. You can kind of see you got to work with it sometimes. And there it is. Look at those ready to go. So I'm going to get them all, a bunch of them done. And then I will come back and I will show you guys the finished product. And there you have it, guys. Ready for winter. Uh, I actually kept the couple out so I could uh, eat them later. Make sure you give it about five minutes to make sure the seals on everything were sealed. Uh, if you start seeing one start opening up, then reseal it. Especially if you know you're going to leave these in your fridge or free in your freezer for a long period of time. Uh, these things are going to be delicious. They're going to get put up. And I don't want to go out without steak this winter. I don't want to go hungry this winter. Uh, I know some people are worried about the power grid. We've talked about that in our channel before. Um, certain circumstances, we've got certain backup plans for. And some circumstances, I hate to say it, there's really not a backup plan for. If we have a crazy EMP Carrington effect, then... There's not much you can do, um, but for the majority of the likable things that could happen, the more likely stuff, then we're trying to get prepared. So there you have it. Bunch of steaks stacked up. I kept two out so I can barbecue them a little later. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to come over and eat a steak, let me know. Leave a comment. Tell me, man, I would love one of them steaks, and I'll see you guys again on T-Square Talk. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.